Hello and welcome back to Paradise Ranch, where we're building the Gavilan Hills Vineyard, as you can see behind me, for the last year. I've been working pretty hard on it. Please join us and follow along. Hit the like button. We'd love to have you join us. We're going to veer off a little bit from our standard little discussion and goings on here for the vineyard and talk about Simon and Garfunkel our two sulcata tortoises we have here on the property. I've received a ton of questions and inquiries about the two of them, and I wanted to add a little bit more and give an idea of what we deal with when we're, de when we're taking care of. We don't really care for, we house and follow <laughs> these big boys. So let's talk about it. In many of our previous videos, I had Simon in the videos and he was giving freaking little havoc on us. And about a month ago, we picked up our friend here, Garfunkel. So we've got Simon. Simon's about a 70 pound Sukatas tortoise. He's 10 years old. This is Garfunkel. Now Garfunkel is about 20 years old and he weighs a little over 140 pounds, 145 pounds. So you can see he's a big boy. I mean, if I can get him to come out, it's a little cool right now. It's only about 72 degrees out, so he's a little he's a little cool. But I was trying to get him to come out with some some peppers, but he's not he's not really helping us out. I'm going to talk about raising and taking care of sulcata tortoises, but I'm not going to be talking about hatchlings or babies or eggs and all that kind of stuff. I really don't like what's going on in the industry where there's so many of these tortoises being given over to some families and not realizing what it's going to take later on to take care of these guys. As you can see, these guys get to be big, real big. And you've got to be able to handle and take care and have room for these big boys as they, as they get up and get going. They're also known as uh, spurred tortoises or African tortoises. The spurred part of it is this thing right here. You can see some of the big spurs that stick out of their feet. They're the third largest um, tortoise in the world. The Galapagos Island tortoises are the ones that are that are larger than these guys. Um, they're native to to northern Africa, actually the southern Sahara Desert, where there's lots of grasses and um, sand and things like that in a much warmer type of climates. So raising somebody like this or, or taking care of large sulcata tortoises are difficult in colder environments. When you're up in colder environments, which I'm not going to get into because I don't have the experience in dealing with cold environments, these uh, people who take care of those tortoises actually have to bring them in the house. They bring, put them in basements things like that, put them in their house. I heard one person who actually puts it in one of their bedrooms for the entire winter. But being in our very dry, arid climate here, like right now, it's mid-November and it's 72 degrees. We had some rain a couple days ago, but right now it's 72 degrees and about four o'clock in the afternoon. So the weather is ideal for these guys and keeping them warm. With that being said, these guys can adapt to different living environments. So I understand taking care of these guys up in the north in colder weather is, has worked out for a lot of people. It's really unknown on how many of these guys live in the U.S., but there's actually more sulcata tortoises in captivity in the U.S. than there actually is in the wild. These guys can get to 100 years old, even more. It's really difficult because we've only been allowed to really take care for these guys over the last 20 years or so, where it's become legal. So we're still trying to figure out if these guys will live to be 100 years old in captivity. But this 20-year-old guy here, he's still, he's still kicking and doing his thing. Males can get up to like 36 inches long and 100, 200 pounds. Females are a lot smaller. They only get to maybe 100 pounds and they're like 24 inches in the environment. So taking care of these guys is really not for everyone. If you get a little, a little baby, a cute little baby from a, from a pet store or a 
or you can buy them online. I think you get them for like fifty dollars, sixty dollar, hundred dollars maybe. They do grow up to be this, so you really need to be able to have the ability to take care of a small turtle, a tortoise. Tortoises that get to be 150 pounds and have the area and the environment and the yard to be able to handle that type of environment. These guys really do like to roam. When you look at the behavior they have, they roam around a lot. They're always walking on days when it's warmer. Today, he's getting ready to go to bed, I think. And it's because it's late and it's only 70 degrees out. But typically, they're walking around a lot, as you can see in some of these videos. They need a large area to, to freely roam. They need to be able to really roam in the area and get into different climates within that area where it could be cool in the shade, warmer in the sun, and, and uh, nice housing in that environment. They love grazing. I mean, they, they graze a lot, and I'll talk about their diet later, but 70, 80% of their diet is actually grass. So they'll graze in the yard sometimes for just for hours, just eating my grass. They are climbers. These guys can climb. And when they start climbing and they get bigger, they can climb over enclosures. My uh, Simon, Simon actually got over his enclosure a couple weeks ago and he was gone for a day until I was able to find him. Um, smaller ones really can climb. When you get to be this size, to climb over something or climb over a barrier when you weigh 150 pounds is a little tougher for them. These guys also like to burrow, and you've heard that before. They do a lot of burrowing. They'll burrow into um, areas in the yard and they can dig holes. I've seen them to have holes that are 10, 15, 20 feet deep into a, into a burrow. If you provide a microclimate in your yard, you don't really have to deal with burrowing. He burrows a little bit up on the other side. Simon burrows a little bit in his house, but they don't really burrow into my, into my grass because they, they use the burrowing as a way to either lower or raise their body temperatures. And if you provide microclimates in your yard, you're not going to have problems with, with these guys um, burrowing a lot. I don't really have a problem with them burrowing. They do dig in a couple places, but I purposely set those areas up for them to burrow. Now taking care of these guys, I mean, they're capable, they can go sometimes weeks without any water or food. Simon actually got sick earlier this year and he was in his house. I had to pull him out a couple times, but he was in his house for almost two months and barely ate anything and didn't have much water. They don't really have any natural predators. There aren't any natural predators except humans. We probably, we probably do more damage to these guys than anybody else. Um, but they do have common, there are some common health problems with, with these guys. Um, let's see, respiratory. They can get some respiratory issues. They can get, they do get like a pneumonia. They have a runny nose, stuff like that. Um, they do something called pyramiding. You can see this guy these little bumps here in, the, in his shell was called pyramiding. You'll see some that have real big pyramids on them. And that primarily is a result of, of their diet and lack of water and stuff like that. Um, there's really, they do get parasites on them. They can get, if they get injured somewhere, they can get flies and um, other things like that. So I have to watch them all the time to make sure there's nothing really crawling on them. And they can get injured. I mean, they can get injured. I had a dog come in and bit uh, Simon's leg once, and he was injured on his leg, but I put, I, I tried to put a Band-Aid on it, but I did put some hydrogen peroxide for a couple days, and he, he healed up just fine. But the number one thing, is for health problems, the way you protect them and to avoid any kind of health problems is, is to provide them a good diet, a good balanced diet, which we'll talk about later. Hey, little Fiona, you wanna come over and sit down? Sit. Sit down while I'm talking. Lay down, lay down, lay down, down, down. down. You're not helping me. Um, you can give them a good, um, a good diet. Like I said, they do 80% of their food is from grass. And then the rest of the stuff I give them are, I consider treats. Um, their living conditions, if they're in bad conditions where, um, there was another turtle I rescued um, a couple months ago that he was in an area that was just all plain dirt and he didn't have a very good diet at all. 
and lack of water. If they don't have access, have access to water, that gets to be a real problem. Now, it's a misnomer that these guys don't need water. They do need water, and when they drink, they can drink quite a bit of water. They do get some moisture from their food, but I have a water dish for Simon and Garfunkel both sitting out that I haven't seen Garfunkel do it yet, but Simon has stuck his head in and started drinking the water, which I'll talk about a little later. The other thing is you have to be, be cognizant or understand that when you're 140 pounds, <laughs> you're going to leave some poop around that's a lot bigger than Fiona here. And I'll show you some pictures of it. Compare Fiona to Simon to, <laughs> to Garfunkel. I have to uh, clean their poop up once a day just to make sure I don't get a mess here in the yard. And the last thing I do is I provide them spa days. And I'll talk about that a little later, but a spa day is essentially a day where I soak them in water. I don't really do it in the winter, in the November, December, January months, but in the summer when it's hot out, I'll soak them. And I'll talk a little later about how I soak this guy. I actually put him in a garden cart. I can slide him into a garden cart, pick him up, and then let him soak, and they enjoy it. You kind of know when they're ready to come out of the garden cart because they'll start they'll start being a little restless and um, a little um, annoyed by being in the water so it's easy to get them out of the water there is tons of misinformation out about these sulcata tortoises um, do they hibernate no desert tortoises the smaller the smaller ones they do hibernate now these guys don't hibernate they're they're here year round. And the problem with that is, is you've got to provide them an environment where they actually can keep warm when the temperature drops below 40 or 50 degrees. And I'll show you their housing later on how I deal with all of that. Um, the other, one of the other misnomers is if you keep them in a small environment, they'll stay small. That's not true. You put them in a small environment, then they won't be able to move around and roam like they need to. So that's a, that's a real good, misnomer. The other thing is, can they eat anything? They, they say, well, they can eat anything. No, they can't. Um, there are some things that are bad for them. They are vegetarian or herbivores. They are vegetarian, but their diet needs to pertain mostly in grass and hay. I use Timothy hay for them, but um, there are some things like lantana or some other, like even fruits, strawberries and um, high sugar content foods they can't process real well. You can give it to them as a treat, but not on a regular basis. Um, the other thing is people will get these guys when they're little. <laughs> you okay? They'll get these guys when they're little. And then when they get to be bigger like this, people say, well, just take them to a, to a vet, to a uh, zoo or to a rescue. Well, most of these rescues are all full and it just gets to be a real problem because there just isn't any place for these guys. And then there's people like me who seem to rescue these guys and find them homes. Uh, it's just, it just heartbreaking. Um, male sulcatas will fight. If you put two, if I had Simon and Garfunkel in the same enclosure, they will fight and they can injure each other where they'll rip the skin away from their shell up here in the, in the neck area. And they can really get injured and, and hurt. So they really shouldn't have two males together. Um, Unless they were together was from the time they were babies. They, you know, I've seen them do that, but putting these two together would not be a good thing. They're very solitary creatures. Other people said, well, they need to have all of the, all these friends in their in their enclosure. And these guys are these guys do great by themselves. They do really well. I don't have any females. I've been looking at getting females for these guys. <coughs> We don't have any females here, it's just the two guys. I've been looking at getting females. If people have any females, they want to donate to the cause, but um, that would give them somebody to, to walk around with. But it, being solitary creatures, they, they do just fine all by themselves. You're not gonna eat that pepper? Just a couple of, a couple of things to kind of recap this little section. Um, there are tasks. I mean, there are things you need to do on a daily, weekly, even a monthly basis. I mean, daily, I have to pick up their poop, like I said earlier. Um, and I kind of make sure every day that they're in their bed, that they're getting what they need to eat, um, and just kind of talk to them every day. Um, on a weekly basis, I, I, um, 
I kind of make sure that they're everything's cleaned up and, and ready for them on a weekly basis. And then monthly, like I said, in the summers, about once a month I give them a spa day. So there's tasks that you have to do with any animal taking care of them. I only give them treats about every two, twice a week maybe. Yeah, maybe twice a week I give them treats and I won't talk about that later when we do the diet. Um, moving these guys around obviously is a problem. Moving 150 pounds <laughs> is, a, is a real problem. Simon, Simon, he's only 70, so I can actually pick him up and move him around. But the way I move these guys around, um, I have a garden cart. I have a garden cart that I can put next to him, and I can actually slide him into the garden cart if I have to move him. Um, I've also used my hand cart, just you know, just a furniture dolly. Just <laughs> you kind of tilt him up a little bit, slide him on the furniture dolly, and I can roll him around a little bit. Um, two people can carry him, but it's it's a heavy heavy beast when you're trying to carry 150 pounds around. Um, there's also, um, I've also put him on, on a, uh, blanket earlier. I needed to move him over one side of the enclosure to the other. And I just, I kind of had him coaxed him onto a blanket and I just pulled the blanket and drug it across the lawn. So <laughs> there are ways to move these guys, but you know, it's not easy when you're dealing with this kind of weight. Um, the last thing I highly recommend. Anybody who has a turtle, I highly recommend you keep a journal. Keep records of the turtle. You know, measure them every year. How big are they? How big are they? How big is their girth? How wide are they? How much do they weigh? Um, even to the point of what's their diet? If, how much are they eating? Are they sleeping too much? Are they staying in their house too much? Uh, I kind of keep in a, a little record of them in a little journal I have. And that way, if their habits change and they're staying in the house too long like when Simon ended up staying in his house for two months I knew that there was something wrong and I tried to correct it and, and it's always interesting to, to kind of keep track of how much they weigh as they're growing along so that's just some of the background of having one of these guys and having them here at the vineyard it's it's a uh, it's a great conversation piece the grandkids love them they feed them all the time he's not in any mood to eat right now it looks like but it's not too bad, but now I want to talk, let me talk a little bit about the housing and enclosures you have to have with tortoises this big. So we'll talk about that in the next, in the next video. So as I said, having these large tortoises is not for everybody, but they're a joy to have. They're great to watch. They're very friendly. They follow me around. Um, they want to get attention. He's a little in a bad mood right now because he's cold. Uh, but it's, it kind of gives you an idea of what it takes to take care of these guys. So until next time, this is Jeff. We're hanging out in the turtle enclosure. We're out. <laughs>